welcome and welcome back to Life on the Branch. Today we are going to be doing uh, a book haul or a book haul review. Um, so as you may have seen, uh, I was recently in Boston um, with my mom. Uh, while we were there, we went ahead and checked out some of the sites. Um, so this is a bookshop that is outdoors. Um, it's called Brattle Bookshop, and it's a resale bookshop. Um, it's very cool. Uh, every book that I'm about to show you, I got either for $5, for $3, or for $1. I am obsessed with books. I My dream eventually, one of my many dreams, is to have a library. Um, and so or like an office with a lot of books, you know, being realistic. But regardless, you know, anything can be a library if you have enough imagination. So anyhow, um, I could not help myself and I just started picking up books. Um, but I'm super excited to show them off to you. Um, so let's get started. Oh, that's heavy. Okay, so I'm going to start with this one. Um, this was actually a gift from uh, my Aunt Chandra, who was also there. She saw it and she was like, you appreciate books. I'm getting this for you. And I was like, well, thanks. But it's Pinocchio. But it's not just, you know, a book of plain old Pinocchio. Um, it's, let's see, what year is this even? Does it say? No. But anyhow, so if you open it up, there's beautiful illustrations. Um, and it like is interactive. So if you can see, the guy moves. Um, then it's like also three dimensional. Like how stunning is that? Just unbelievably impressive, like for the level of you know for the for the age of this book that this is in this good of condition. It's like look at that. That's so cool, um, and I just can't wait to like eventually when I have kids like show them this book, um, you know, and. I'm just glad that like it won't just be sitting on a shelf somewhere like children's books are meant to be read um, and I don't know it's just I'm just excited that it will have another life of being uh, thoroughly enjoyed by kids. Um, and it's got like the, um, oh, here's another good 3D example. Like, are you kidding me? I just love it. I, lo I love pop-up books. I really don't know when this was published, though. It doesn't say. I don't know. I'm going to have to look into it. But very cool nonetheless. So that's the children's book I got. And speaking of kids, um, so some of you may may know, I am an urban ed minor and I'm getting my master's in education. So education is like something that's fascinating to me. So I was super excited to see a book called The Girls School. Um, and here's the reviews. A really sensible, practical, yet witty and well-written account of what the school is like, which bypasses all the sludge of old boy reminiscences or uh, or coffee table photographs and treats it in the spirit of modern methods of investigation from the Sunday Times. Uh, this book appears at a time when the place of the traditional public schools in the total system of secondary education is very much in the forefront of public discussion. In it, the remarkable history of Winchester is examined from 1822 to 1950 from the point of view of the social origins of the Winchester boys and their subsequent careers. 
Um, yeah, so I just thought this was like very cool. Um, so this is from uh, 1967. Uh, and it goes through um, like it's nonfiction and it will talk about like girls schools. I, I don't know. It's just cool. It's very cool and I'm very excited about it. Building on that theme, so I also bought this book, which is The Public Schools from Within, Essays by Schoolmasters. I don't know if you can see that, but it's only written on the side. There's nothing on the front or back, which I actually kind of love. This book is from 1906. You can see here. Um, I can't even believe that. Um, to have something that is from the time period. Um, and you can, you knew it was old when it says essays by schoolmasters instead of like teachers or professors. Um, because schoolmasters predate those terms. It's, it's about... Um, believe yeah English like schools in England um, regardless it gives a lot of insight to how education was thought of and it'll be super interesting to compare it to um, the history that I've read about uh, American education from this time period so I'm looking forward to doing that I know you're like oh my god she's so nerdy I know. Um, okay, uh, but I did not just buy books about school. Another children's book I picked up uh, for three dollars is uh, Zorro from Walt Disney. Now I have no idea what Zorro is about. The reason I picked this book up is because in a Cinderella story with Hilary Duff, her friend, uh, whose character's name I forget now, um, went as Zorro uh, to the ball. And I just realized I've never, I've never known what that character was. Um, but I saw this and I was like, oh yeah, that is Zorro. So uh, I'm looking forward to reading it. Um, it's also like clearly written for children. It's big text font. It's meant to be like, you know, when kids are first getting into chapter books with that, without pictures. Um, but yeah, I am, I'm very excited about this. Hopefully, you know, you never know with Walt Disney what the themes will be. Uh, so I'll have to read it before I let anybody else read it. Now the library dates are from like 1976, 1975. They're just like stamped in here at random. Love it. Love it. Okay. Now this might be one of the most beautiful books I've ever seen. It's uh, an original bell um, by E.P. Rowe. And take a look at the shimmer on that cover. And here's the side just absolutely stunning absolutely stunning um copyright 1885 it's in remarkable shape from being from from that time um so I'll, I'll just read like the opening few lines um, because it doesn't give like a really a plot summary, which is kind of interesting. I don't know why it gives a, I mean, it has a preface and then a contents. Um, so like chapter one is a rude awakening, then a new acquaintance, a new friend, women's chief right. Be hopeful that I may hope, a scheme of life, 
surprises, charmed by a critic, a girl's light hand, Willard Murin, an oath and a glance, a vow, a siege begun. So many chapters. There's like so many friggin' chapters. They have to be short. Yeah, they are. They're they're very, very short uh, chapters. Um, so here's a here's an opening line from the preface. No race of men, scarcely an individual, is so devoid of intelligence as to not recognize power. Few gifts are more courted. Power is almost as varied as character, and the kind of power most desired or appreciated is a good measure of character. The preeminence furnished by thew and muscle is most generally recognized, but as men reach levels above the animal, other qualities take the lead. It is seen that the immaterial spirit wins the greater triumphs, that the brainless giant compared with the dwarf of trained intelligence can accomplish little. The scale runs on into the moral qualities until at last humanity has given its sanction to the divine words, whoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. The few who have successfully grasped the lever of which uh, Archimedes dreamed are those who have attained the highest power to serve the world. Among the myriad phrases, phases of power, perhaps that of a gifted and beautiful woman is the most subtle and hard to define. It is not the result of mere beauty, although that may be an important element. And if wit, intelligence, learning, accomplishments, and goodness are added, all combined cannot wholly explain the power that some women possess. Deeper, perhaps more potent than all else, is an individuality which distinguishes one woman from all others and imparts her own peculiar fascination. Of course, such words do not apply to those who are content to be commonplace themselves and who are satisfied with the ordinary homage of ordinary minds or the conventional attention of men who are incited to nothing better. One of the purposes of this story is to illustrate the power of a young girl, not so beautiful nor so good as many of her sisters. She was rather commonplace at first, but circumstances led her to endeavor to be true to her own nature and conscience and to adopt a simple scheme of life. She achieved no marvelous success, nothing beyond the ability and multitudes like herself. I've also sought to reproduce with some color of life and reality a critical period in our civil war. The scenes and events of the story culminate to practicality in the summer of 1863. The novel was not written for the sake of scenes or events. They are employed merely to illustrate character at the time and to indicate its development. The reader in the South must be bitter and prejudiced indeed if he does not discover that I have sought to be fair to the impulses and motives of its people. <laughs> oh, it's going to be spicy. You see, she, she's a union book. <laughs> um, anyhow. So I'm just really interested in this. Um, we'll we'll see. We'll see. I'll, if if it's like if I when I it's not it's gonna be a while till I can have the time to read it, but I'll give her a review if it's worth hearing about. Now this book, okay. So this is uh, the portrait um, of Mr. W. H. And it comes in this little sleeve, um, like that, and then uh, it's by o Oscar Wilde, um, and it's like so so tiny. Um, oh God, and it's in Roman numerals again. Why? It must have had something to do with the time. Anyhow, so this essay first appeared in Blackwood's Edinburgh Magazine for July 1889 and is here reprinted in its entirety. So it's like these itty bitty pages. Um, like itty bitty. Like it's smaller than my hand. Um, but Anyhow, that's just very, I love, I just love how unique that is. Um, and it's a classic, so 
This next book, um, Tales from Hans Christian Andersen, who um, may sound familiar to you because fairy tales. So this book, also absolutely stunning with the floral pattern, the sign. You can tell this was like well read. Um, and here's the back, just gorgeous. Sorry, my nails are like, need to be painted. Um, but anyhow, so this book uh, was copyrighted in 1897. Um, stories include uh, the wild swans, the ugly duckling, the little mermaid, um, let's see, where, the snow queen, the constant tin soldier, um, oh, the little match girl. Just very cool. And it, it'll be interesting to see, like, what, you know, because obviously so many of these stories have been adapted by, like, Disney or other major companies. It'll be interesting to read the ones that weren't and to see why they weren't or if they should be. So I'm, I'm very interested, uh, in this one. But again, it's like, ah, cool for me, like, cool to, like, be able to read with my kids someday. Just, like, a neat book. <laughs> Um, now this book is called The City of Dreadful Night, um, which is actually the name of one of the poems in the book. Um, this is the cover. Again, it's got that cool silver to it. Just very pretty all around. Um, and the pages, I think, are intentionally battered. I know that sounds kind of weird, but like on the sides, I don't know if any of you have read The Tale of Despero, but the pages on that book um, are purposefully like worn on the sides. Um, and I say that because if you compare it to this book, um, even though clearly it's well worn, this one has more tattered, more tattered pages. Um, and I don't think it's as old, but we can check. So this is 1899. So it's, it's about the same amount of, so the same age as this book, um, but it's poems. You can, I just can't imagine it's being reread as much as fairy tales. Um, but anyhow, it's a selection from the poetical works of James Thompson. Um, and Again, um, it's, like I said, so, uh, it's very cool. So this is, this is the, uh, opening. Oh, it starts with, uh, a quote from Dante, uh, in Italian <laughs> or Latin maybe, um, Uh, per me si va nella siete dolente. I don't know what it means, not translated, because everyone knows what that means. Um, so here's the start. Here's the start. Little dust as prostrate, in the dust I write, my heart's deep languor and my soul's sad tears. Yet why evoke the specters of black night to blot the sunshine of exultant years? Why disinter dead faith from moldering hidden? Why break the seals of mute despair unbidden and wail life's discords into careless ears? I love that cadence. I absolutely love it. Um, here's, a, uh, here's another, this is page 28. Um, from writing a great work with patient plan to justify the ways of God to man and show how ill must fade and perish quite, I wake from daydreams this, to this real night. From desperate fighting with a little band against the powerful tyrants of our land to free our brethren in their own despite, I wake from daydreams to, to this real night. Thus challenged by that warder sad and stern, each one responded with his countersign. Then entered the cathedral and in turn, I entered also having given mine. 
but lingered near until I heard no more and marked the closing of the massive door. I freaking love old poems. <laughs> if in, for nothing else than the way that they sound. Um, and just the attention to where the syllables are and um, where the stresses in the words are. It's very cool. Very cool. Uh, and of course, the, the newest book that I got from uh, this fall, which does not fit at all with the um, age of these other books. I'll turn them so you can see. So these are the other books, okay, that we, we're talking about. Um, I also got... Stephen Colbert, I am, a, I am America and so can you. <laughs> I remember when this book came out, um, like when the Colbert Report was still running, it was one of my favorite shows. I was a huge fan of him on The Late Show, but was a huge fan of the Colbert Report and The Daily Show of that era, so I'm looking forward to reading this and just taking a peek back in time to like old politics. <laughs> Because 2016, everything just changed. Um, but speaking of politics and politicians, I also have purchased The True Story of Benjamin Franklin. Um, which I'm super, super, super excited about. Um, so Penn, where I go to school, um, was founded by Benjamin Franklin, and, uh, so obviously, like, kind of a big deal on our campus, um, but also he's since become, like, one of my mom's heroes, um, because he has a lot of, like, funny little quotes, uh, about, like, God is real because fear exists. It's, like, very, just funny. Um, and so this book, let's see. Was published in 1898. So it's going to be really interesting to see like what about Benjamin Franklin they felt was important for us to know. Um, And it's, I guess, part of a series called Children's Lives of Great Men. So it's going to be more about his childhood. And, like, on the side, you can see, like, the, the kite incident, you know, like, about electricity. Um, it's just very cool. Um, it's also written, like, In large font, I think again it's meant to be read to kids, maybe. But it's funny because, like, obviously Benjamin Franklin um, spent a great amount of time in Boston, so so some of them is like Benno Hall, Boston, which is like I just was there, um, and then some of it obviously, obviously a lot of it takes place in Philadelphia, so it talks about the Liberty Bell which Franklin set a ringing, or Franklin signs the Declaration, also Philly, um, Independence Hall, Philadelphia. <laughs> Just very cool, like, to be on the East Coast. I'm from the Midwest, so being on the East Coast and now being to many of these places, it's just cool that I will have a visual of what it was like because so many of those buildings are still around. Um, so cool. Um, but the opening line is, this is the story of Benjamin Franklin, most remarkable of Americans. <laughs> How remarkable a man he was, I shall try to tell you. What he did for his country, for you and for me, is a tale worth the telling and the, her and the hearing. For his story is fully as remarkable as was he himself, as wise as Solomon, as simple as Aesop, as witty as Mark Twain, as inventive as Edison, as gentle as a lamb, as bold as a lion, 
He tried his hand at everything and failed at nothing. What an epitaph. <laughs> That's... This guy, he just loved Ben Franklin. <laughs> failed at nothing. I don't even think Ben Franklin would say that about himself. Um, but it's by Elbridge Br Brooks, uh, illustrated. So, that's fun. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's good to know that the fetishization of the Founding Fathers started early in this country. <laughs> um, but anyhow, I know this is a little bit different from a, a regular haul video, but I, it, I hope you liked it. Um, let me know uh, in the description down below where you find your best uh, vintage books. Obviously, I'm interested in collecting them. Uh, or like a cool fa uh, book find that you found. Clearly, I can read better than I can speak. But anyhow, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of our videos, uh, click subscribe and ding the bell button to know when we post, which is every day. Tomorrow's video will be uh, another haul video, but this time it will be a uh, secondhand designer clothes shop uh, haul. So I'm looking forward to showing you uh, what I found there. I'm also from Boston, and yeah, uh, I hope you are, gonna, are enjoying these three-part Boston series, and then we'll be back on track for more hamster and other content. Um, but most importantly, I hope you have a great day. Bye!